Last week was a very interesting week for President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta, politically speaking. President Ru Kenyatta was in Kisi where he presided over the Mashuja Day celebrations. And then the next day, the president was in Nyamira County where he launched several development projects in Nyamira County and also received officially the Building Bridges Initiative Report. His deputy failed to attend that event. Then the next day, President Ru Kenyatta was in Kisumu County. And the president was received euphorically. And everybody was actually shocked at the kind of reception the president received in Kisumu. And then on Sunday, President Uhuru Mwage Kenyatta then traveled to central Kenya, Nyeri County to be precise, and in Madeira constituency. That visit was significant, politically speaking, for President Uhuru Mwage Kenyatta. Because Nyeri County is, is just like Kisumu. It sets the pace for the politics of the larger Mount Kenya region. And most Kenyans had anticipated that the president was going to create a momentum for BBI, for the people of central Kenya, in Nyeri. That did not happen. And then the next day was the big day. The official launch of the Building Bridges Initiative Report, which was attended by the president himself, his deputy William Samuel Ruto, Raila Odinga and other leaders. And William Ruto, who was viewed as an outsider during that event, actually emerged as the winner on that particular day. And it can't be by coincidence that after the hectic week and several activities by the president, the deputy president has finally chosen to go to central Kenya and including going to Madeira constituency. And just like I keep on saying on this platform, that in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. Everything in politics is normally designed to achieve specific political objectives. There is specific reasons why the duty president is headed to the larger central Kenya region. Because remember, during the Bombers of Kenya function or event, President Uhuru Mwage Kenyatta indicated and reminded his deputy that the race ni ile ya kupeana Kijiti. And instead of waiting for Kijiti, the duty president is, is running backward. He used that analogy. He will listen in to, to the president briefly. Race ni hii ni ile ya kuhandover. Unajua? Eh? Sindio? Naitua Rile. Unakimbia, unakimbia ule muengine anakugojea pale ana kana kukugojea ndio ashike aendelee si ndio lakini sasa my brother William hapa amepinduka anakimbia nyuma so it was expected that the duty president was going to actually take advantage of the gesture by president Ruki Nyata to try and mend fences with the president. Let me just go through his program this week in central Kenya. On 30th, which is Friday, the deputy president will be at uh, Ruriru Stadium. That was, that's in uh, Madhioya constituency. And later on, the deputy president will be at General Cargo Stadium in Kangema constituency. Those two constituencies are represented in parliament by allies of President Uhuru Mwage Kenyatta. Mathio is, is represented in parliament by Peter Kimari, a close ally of President Uhuru Mwage Kenyatta. And then Kangema constituency is represented by Muturi Kigano. We all know Muturi Kigano. This is the guy who contested for 43 years to become the member of parliament. He finally succeeded. And when the president engineered changes in parliament, this guy was rewarded by President Ruru Kenyatta. So on, uh, on 30th, Alice Wahome and Nindi Nyoro, who are not members of parliament of those two constituencies, will be hosting President Uhuru Kenyatta, 
will be hosting the duty president William Samoei Ruto in those two constituencies. There's normally a rule in parliament that you don't go to a constituency of a fellow member of parliament without permission unless there is a, a disagreement. For example, I can't invite my friend Osoro, Silvanus, even uh, Wambubu Mujiri, or even uh, Mohaji Chofpevu, or even Junat Mohamed. Those are my friends. I can't invite them to Nyakach constituency without the courtesy of asking Aduma or. Otherwise, you'll wait for them and they might not turn up. Kama Nyarambe, waneza Aduma to pesa. But if that invite is through the local member of parliament, they will always come. So there's that cardinal rule. It's not written anywhere, but it's the tradition in parliament. I want you to I want to challenge you to ask any member of parliament. It's normally the rule. But in this case, Alice Wahome and Indinoro will be hosting the duty president in those two constituencies. And on 31st, which is on Saturday, the duty president will be in uh, Kerogoya. That's in Kirinyaga County, hosted by Ngereshi. And then, later on, he will be at Kiafa Stadium, which is in Nyeri County. Madhioya, which is in Nyeri County. Madhira constituency. That constituency is represented by Rigadi Gashagwa, one of the key opponents of the president. So the duty president will be in that constituency hosted by the member of parliament and that's why where, where things is very interesting when president Uru Muge Kenyatta visited the constituency the member of parliament failed to show up he was absent remember the president of the republic of kenya who comes from central kenya and akikuyu let me just use that word attending a function in Nyeri county in madira constituency and the member of parliament did not attend without any excuse. Then less than a week later, the same member of parliament is now hosting the duty president William Samiruto. So what message is the duty president trying to pass to the president? In my view, the duty president is keen on passing a message. And before we get into all those, if you are watching this video for the first time, please take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And again, let me remind you that today is actually my birthday. So you can, when I saw my messages, you know, the coffee thing, you can, when I saw my through my WhatsApp number, which is 0777741323. So I was saying that there is no way the duty president would have organized these events without an objective. In my view, he wants to achieve the following objectives. Number one, I think the duty president wants to stamp his authority in central Kenya politics. That's exactly what he wants to do. When the president was in uh, Nyeri County, it was an anticlimax. Kenyans had expected the president was going to be received like a hero. That did not happen. The images we saw from Nyeri were actually sickening for a president. They should not have even been shared in the first place. But of course the president was there. They've given the explanation that that was a small center and the president just stopped to greet people there. I don't buy, I won't buy that explanation. That was a flop. And that's why I said in a previous video that the president should actually fire his advisors and handlers. And I'm going to explain in another video why I think strongly that President Ruki Kenyatta is being let down by his handlers. And therefore, he should fire them. So the, president, the deputy president is actually trying to stamp his authority in central Kenya politics. That's what he's trying to do. And he's not trying to prove that between himself and the president, who is more popular? I am sure in Madeira, in Madeira constituency, where the president was over the weekend, the deputy president is going to do everything possible to pull the biggest crowd. And I want to tell you that even at the same point where the president was not received well, 
the duty president is likely to go there and is likely to buy some mandazi and soda. And the, a large crowd would be waiting for him around there. So basically, the duty president is going to stamp his authority. He's going to go against the 48 rules of power or laws of power number one, which states that you should not outshine your master. The deputy president is on a mission to outshine President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta in the larger Mount Kenya region. Number two, I think the deputy president is also going there to try and maintain the momentum. He has created a momentum. Remember in Muranga, the last time he had a rally there at Canon, lives were lost. But the crowd turnout was so huge. And the fact of the matter is that if you look at the number of members of parliament who are still supporting the duty president from the larger central Kenya region, the number has actually reduced. In Muranga, you can only count those two members of parliament. In Kirinyaga, I don't know how many members of parliament are still with him. In Kiambu, you can, you can count two who are vocal. That's uh, Moses Kuria and Kimani Shungwa. Those are the realities. In Nyeri, you can only count Giradi. So he's been losing members of parliament. But the real president wants to maintain the momentum. He wants to ensure that the, that the crowd which attends his rallies still remains the same. The real president wants to maintain his relationship with most of the county assembly members, the MCS, from most of those areas. And that's why in one of the functions, he has indicated they have indicated in, uh, in that uh, banner that the member of parliament will be the host and all members of the county assemblies. So he wants to continue maintaining the momentum. Number three, I think the deputy president is also keen on thwarting any attempt by the Kieleweke team to gain ground in the central Kenya region. Without the deputy president presence in the area, Kileweke are actually controlling the region. Anytime the duty president is not there. For example, is there any event, successful event, which you can tell me that Ali Sohome or even Didi Nyoro has organized in their constituencies successfully without the duty president? Not a single one. And Kileweke have been going there without the presence of Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. So the duty president wants to continue going to central Kenya because in this country, there's no region where the duty president has gone to more than central Kenya and the larger Mount Kenya region. So the duty president is basically trying to thwart any attempt to take the region back to President Uru Kenyatta. The duty president would be comfortable controlling the voting bloc in that area. What I mean is simple. Even assuming the president is going to support the duty president, which is not guaranteed. The fact of the matter is the duty president would be more comfortable if people will be voting for him as William Ruto and not voting for him because of Uhuru Kenyatta's support. Number four, I also believe that what the duty president is trying to do, he is trying to scare Uhuru Kenyatta from going to the larger central Kenya region. Uhuru Kenyatta and his handlers have announced that very soon, they are going to start embarking on tours of the region. The Luo Council of Elders are expected in the larger Mount Kenya region, in Nyeri. That trip was cancelled because Raila Odinga is outside the country. And Uru Kenyatta, I'm told, also wanted that trip to be cancelled so that it can be organized in a huge way. And that's why the duty president is going there. He wants to go there, attract a mammoth crowd. So that the president would get scared of going there and not receiving the same kind of reception as the president. Because remember, it exposes the president. The near event exposed President Rukinata. If the president was to attend another function there without being received well, then he's going to expose him further. So basically, that's what the duty president is trying to do. He wants to scare the president from organizing events in the area. Number five is the Building Bridges Initiative campaigns. I am sure the duty president is going to go to Nyeri, he's going to go to, 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 to Morana, 
and go to Kirinyaga counties over the weekend. That's on Saturday and Sunday. The guarantee I can give you is that the duty president will speak well about the Building Bridges Initiative. He's going to call for consensus and the rest. All his allies who are going to accompany him are going to reject that document. And that's the message they're going to tell people outside there. Because if you have 10 people talking, 10 members of parliament talking, rejecting the document, then the duty president is now coming up as the last speaker and calling for consensus. It doesn't make sense. It's exactly what they were doing to the president, where every other speaker would abuse the president, but the duty president would always stand up and talk as if he and President Uru Kenyatta were the best friends. So basically, these guys are going to launch anti-BBI campaigns in Central Kenya region. And lastly, I think the duty president would also be keen on trying to consolidate the gains just received in the, in the, from the area. Let's face it, Central Kenya has stood with the duty president. The kind of pressure the system has placed on them, especially members of parliament, the kind of pressure the duty, the duty president himself has uh, experienced, I am sure, if it were not for him, someone would have given up. But I think the duty president is just keen on consolidating the gains because already he has two members of parliament from Muranga, Aliso Ahome and Randin Dinyoro supporting him. He would not want to disappoint them. He has, uh, he has uh, Gashagwa in Madeira. He would not want Gashagwa to dump him. So he must move, make them close to him. They must continue inviting him and he must continue attending those events. I don't know what you think. But in my view, the trip by the duty president to the larger Mount Kenya region, specifically in Madeira, is actually meant to provoke President Uhuru Magekinata. I don't know what you think, but let me know your thoughts. Or probably you can explain to me, like a child, why the duty president would go to, Made Ma to, to Madeira constituency and hosted by the member of parliament. The same member of parliament could not attend a function for President Uhuru Mugia Kenyatta. I don't know your thoughts. Let me read in the comment section. Thank you guys. You can always reach me on my WhatsApp number, which is 0777 741323.